During World War II, the bomber played two roles in air combat. One as a tactical weapon against an enemy's conventional ground forces. The other as a strategic weapon penetrating the enemy's heartland, striking factories, airfields, and key installations. The advent of the atomic bomb made strategic air power potentially the most destructive force in human history. World War II soon gave way to the Cold War, and the U.S. faced a new enemy in a new age. Created in 1946, the mission of the U.S. Air Force's Strategic Air Command was a deterrent against the Soviet Union's growing nuclear capability. By 1960, two more weapons joined the atomic bombers as part of the United States Strategic Force, the land-based Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, or ICBM, and the submarine-launched ballistic missile. Together, these powerful weapons systems formed a nuclear triad, the goal of which was to deter thermonuclear war with the threat of mutually assured destruction. Today's strategic bombers evolved from the propeller-driven bombers of World War II, like the legendary B-17 Flying Fortress. After the war, more advanced propeller-driven bombers entered service, including the enormous B-36. For long-range missions, propeller-driven aircraft remained more efficient than the new jet bombers. Early jet bombers such as the B-47 simply couldn't reach targets in the Soviet Union from bases in the United States. Then, in 1952, came the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress, the first jet bomber with intercontinental range. From bases in the northern U.S., it could reach Soviet targets more than 3,000 miles away. During the Cold War, the tactics of strategic bombers would also evolve. For nearly a decade after World War II, the main threat to bombers remained the enemy interceptor. But in the mid-1950s, a new threat emerged. Surface-to-air missiles. force stuck with a B-52, switching tactics instead of aircraft. Vulnerable to the new missiles, the bomber would no longer attack from high altitude. Instead, it would enter its target zone at low levels, using terrain to mask its approach from enemy radar. Complementing the new tactics were innovative weapons like the Quail decoy missile. When launched by an incoming bomber, the Quail created a false image of a B-52 on enemy radar screens. Short-range missiles such as the SRAM were also used to knock out enemy radar and missile sites before the bombers reached their target. The Vietnam War gave the Strategic Air Command another mission and offered the B-52 a new role. Instead of nuclear warheads, most B-52s were modified to carry conventional bombs. Using their cavernous bomb bays and new wing pylons, B-52s could carry up to 27 and a half tons of bombs. In addition to their strategic nuclear deterrent mission, the B-52s joined the tactical air war, bombing Viet Cong positions, supply routes, and staging areas. By the end of 1972, B-52s had dropped more than 5 million tons of bombs and were credited with driving the North Vietnamese back to the negotiating table.
After nearly a decade of conventional bombing missions, most of the B-52 force reverted to its original role of nuclear deterrence. Towards the end of the Vietnam War, a new strategic bomber, the B-1, was being developed to replace the aging B-52. The B-1 Lancer could fly at supersonic speeds at low altitudes to better evade Soviet defenses. Great hope was placed on the B-1, but in 1977 concerns about its cost and effectiveness led the U.S. Air Force to shelve the program. Instead, they chose to extend the life of the B-52. by modifying it to carry long-range air-launched cruise missiles called ELCOMs. Rather than the bomber having to run the gauntlet of Soviet anti-air munitions, the B-52 could launch a nuclear-armed missile from outside its airspace and penetrate the target zone. In the 1980s, the B-1 program was revived, and in 1986, the B-1B Lancer joined the Air Force inventory. Through stealth technology, the Lancer reduced its visibility to enemy radar, though not enough to call it a true stealth aircraft. In 1989, the first true stealth bomber, the B-2 Spirit, took to the skies. The radar evading B-1B and B-2 were designed for the penetrator role, flying all the way to the target to deliver their weapons. More visible and vulnerable, the B-52 took on a new role as a standoff bomber, firing its missiles from hundreds of miles away from its objective. While well, stealth can't be added to the B-52 itself, it can be added to its payload. The B-52 is now equipped with the ACM, the Stealthy Advanced Cruise Missile. Innovations like the ACM, as well as frequent improvements to the B-52 itself, extended the life of this 1950s bomber into the 21st century. Decades after the last B-52 left the factory, it remains the most numerous bomber in the Air Force today. Of the 94 B-52s still flying, most are older than their pilots and air crew. The B-52 has endured thanks to a continuous program of rebuilding and upgrading. Since its introduction, so many parts have been changed on each bomber that little remains of the original aircraft. Over the years, everything from the avionics to the airframe has been replaced. B-52 has been modified so many times, I don't even know if there's an original piece on the aircraft except for maybe the skin and the, uh, the engines. Every time it goes into depot, you're coming out with a new airplane, so you know you could fly the plane probably forever, but obviously eventually become obsolete. Only one model of the B-52 is currently in Air Force service. Like its predecessors, the B-52H has a number of improvements over earlier models. The H model is, of course, a series improvement on the B-52 fleet, and it's the last of the breed, if you will, the Cadillac of the force. Essentially, the largest significant difference is in the engine, which is a fan jet engine, uh, an earlier technology low bypass fan, but it offers improved fuel consumption, greater range. Of course, there's some improvements in the electronic countermeasures of the aircraft, uh, some of the weapon suites, uh, certainly the fire control system is different. Uh, if you will, it is the ultimate evolution of the series of the B-52 airplane.